5 and verse 22. <coughs> it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Paul says, against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. Uh, now, we, we talked about a lot. Now, of course, if you're on uh, the calls, which I hope you can be on, at 6 o'clock in the morning, we're, we're actually starting uh, teaching on the book of Galatians. And uh, it's important that you take advantage of your spiritual life. Everything has its place. I want to start by saying this tonight. Every, I want everybody to listen, young and old. Everything in life has its place. Family, friends, uh, activities, everything. Right. But we should be able to take time for our spiritual life as well. Maybe I get an amen, maybe not. I don't know. But you got a job. You got everybody in this room. I don't care if you're 10 years old or, or 70 years old. You have responsibilities in life. And everyone in here has obligations, things they need to do. Some of us work. Some of us do other things. You got school, everything. But we should be able to have some time in our day. I saw something today from a person that I know who doesn't even live for the Lord. But... Uh, their, their statement was this. It said, I've come to a place in my life where I realize that I need time in my life to pray every single day. Now, this person is not even professed to be born again. But they even said that they realize that they need time to pray in their hearts and in their life every single day. I was listening to another guy who's the furthest thing from a Christian that you can be. But he made a statement that, that you think about the world, the world who doesn't believe what you believe. And he made the statement, he said, if any human being is going to be what they ought to be in life, they need to have time in their day, a private time, where they get away from everything and meditate or whatever. Of course, he went into some deep spiritual stuff. But think about that for just a moment. As Christians, we should sense a need in our heart to be fed and to spend some time with God. And I want to stress that point tonight. I'm not teaching on that, but however, that's just the leading that I have from the Lord to, to, uh, to say it again. Well, Torah, how much time? That's between you and God. Hear what I just said? That's between you and God. That's not between you, me, and God. You don't have to come report to me, hey, I spent three hours. If you got to do that, then it's not real. But you need some time in your life to get away from everything. Get away from social media. Hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Get away from texting. Get away from the phone call. Get away from everything. I don't care if it's 10 minutes. You need to be able to get away and turn some things off and just spend some quiet time with God. Just you and God talking to God. I can guarantee you one thing. God's got something to say to you hmm. that he may not say tonight. But he's got something to say to you individually. And it's not all, God doesn't just beat people up. God's got some good things to tell you. He's got blessings in store for you. He's got things in store for your life that he wants to do for you. So let's keep that in mind tonight. As we study the word of God, your spiritual life is important. And I want to say this. I don't know how I'm here, but just go with it tonight. But make sure you understand, you come into church Wednesday night, this is not a time to have a good time. Come on. Man. This is a time to get before God. Come on, man. This is a time to get in 45 minutes here. Well, I'm not talking about before church. We can fellowship and after church. But when the Bible study starts, come on. we need to make sure we bring our minds in and say, hey, it's time to hear from the Lord. It's time to study the word of God. It's time That's young and old, and it's time to get before God. For 45, 50 minutes, or whatever the case may be, we need to take advantage Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights, Sunday evenings at 6 o'clock. Brother Lauren Larson is preaching a series on law and grace. Yeah. If I'm you, I'm taking 30 minutes out of my day to, to tune into that because that's good eating. I know you can go to Harvest after church. Now, don't get me wrong. That's good eating. 
But I love to eat when I'm in church, too. I need to hear the word of God. I need to be fed. So if you don't hear me tonight, please, let me stress that to you. Let me stress that to everyone in here tonight. Let's take advantage of every opportunity we have to get before God. And number two, when I'm in church, I want to be in church. I'm in church to have a time in the Lord. I'm not here to see. I love you, Asia, but I didn't come to see you tonight, baby. <laughs> I came to be in the presence of God. I'm going to visit with them after church. We can yeah. talk, laugh. We can talk about Come our on. food from the day. We can do all of that. Mm -hmm. But while I'm in this time, this window here, I need to hear from God because I'm <coughs> facing some things that I need direction in my life and I don't quite understand. So let's keep that in mind tonight. As we study this great book of Galatians and as we close out teaching this on the fruit of the Spirit, uh, we, you know, we've talked about a lot of things, but, uh, you know, just take a few moments tonight to really begin to think about my character as a Christian, not about my gift, not about my preaching, my singing or prophesying or laying hands on the sick, but my character as a Christian. And Paul said something in the fifth chapter of Galatians that I think is very important uh, to all of us. And he said that. The whole law can be summed up in this one word, that you love your neighbor as yourself. Think about that for just a few moments, that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Well, you got to ask yourself this tonight. How much do you love you? Mm. Yeah. How much do you look out for you? Amen. How much do you cover for you? Mm. How much do you protect you? How much do you really love you? you? How much do we defend ourselves? How much do we make excuses for ourselves? I mean, everybody in here ought to say amen, because every one of us have that self problem. And it's a reality because Paul said that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And when he starts to really get into this teaching in chapter 5, you got to remember, Paul has already established something to this church. He's told them that the gospel of Jesus Christ is revealed from heaven. It's not originated in man. Yeah, he, he told them that. And he told them as well that justification is by faith alone. You're saved by faith alone. Not by your activity, not by your works, not by your good behavior, but you're saved by faith alone. You're saved because you believe in who Christ is and what Christ has done at Calvary. That's why you're saved. You're not saved because of something you did or something you earned from God. And, and Paul is establishing that truth. And so as they get on into this letter, by the time we get to chapter 5 and 6, he's dealing with what we call practical application. Now, we use those terms, but what does application really mean? It means that you understand something, you hear something, God is revealing something to you, but now as I approach Thursday, can I apply the principles that I'm learning or that God is revealing to me? Can I apply those principles in my life? It's not enough for me to quote the scripture, mm -hmm. but I need to be able to live out the scripture. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to rightly divide the scripture and apply the scripture to my life. Now, Here's a moment of truth for everybody in here. Have you ever quoted a scripture and then the next day that scripture had an opportunity to be uh, taken advantage of in your life and you didn't do it? Yeah. But you quoted it. Yeah. You shouted when you heard it. You shouted when it dropped in your spirit. But then somebody offended you Thursday and you flipped out. You didn't follow peace with all men. Man, I love it. That's good. It didn't happen the way you planned it out in your mind. That situation escalated and it got out of control and it didn't go the way you hoped it would go and thought it would go. We're talking about application here. And the reality is that I do want fruit in my life. I do want God to change me. I do need God to change me. I need God to fix me. There are things in my life that are broken. There are things in my heart that are not right. There are things surfacing in me. Hear me what I'm saying tonight. As a believer, you're going to see some things in you, not in your brother. Here's the, here's the reality that you've got to address tonight. How am I dealing with what I see? 
How am I approaching what I see? Here, listen, sin was addressed at Calvary. Yeah. So when I see this surface in my life and I'm seeing this problem in my heart and life, I need to make sure I understand Christ took care of this at Calvary. I may not see the victory today. Yeah. I may not be experiencing the victory in this area like I want, but you need to understand that it is vital that as believers we seek after victory in our heart and life. Mm -hmm. Sin is a big deal. Yeah. We don't want to make light of sin. And if you think I'm standing up here tonight because I'm qualified or I'm the guru of spiritual things and you're sadly mistaken because the Holy Spirit is dealing with issues in me and I'm up here trying to tell you that he wants to deal with issues in all of us. Amen. All of us. Yeah. Not some of us, but all of us. And Paul here in this, in this text, think about him now. He said the whole law is fulfilled in love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, Paul goes on to say this. He said, but don't bite and devour one another as wild animals yeah. and consume one another. And then he says, this I say then, walk in the spirit yeah. and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Oh. Paul says the answer, I want you to hear me, the answer to the bickering, the fighting, the upheaval, the backbiting, the gossip, the tearing one another down, the legalism. The answer is walking in the spirit. And this brings us to chapter 5, verse 19 through 21, yeah. and verse 22 through 24. Remember who you are. Meites. Yeah. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uncleanness, hatred, variance, strife, witchcraft, sedition, mm. hatred, variance, strife, hatred, variance, strife. <laughs> we stay there. Hatred, my, we can, my. sometimes we can, adultery, fornication, <laughs> uncleanness, some people say, well, you know, because those are the bigger yeah. things. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> hatred, variance, yeah. strife, seditions, yeah. witchcraft. You know, us being mean to one another. Yeah. Us not forgiving one another. Mm -hmm. Paul didn't say these are the worst. and they, No, all of them were works of the flesh. He said, walk in the spirit. This is the answer. Walk in the spirit and you will not, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. He said, the flesh lusteth against the spirit, the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to another that you cannot do the things that you would. In other words, as a Christian, I have a desire to live holy. Amen, somebody in here. Amen. There should be, let me say that, yeah. a desire in you to live holy. If there is no desire in you to live holy, you're not a Christian. Right. Right. Now, I know that's a hard statement and a bold, but if there's not a desire in you to live right, then you're not saved. You need to be born again. But at the moment you got saved, God put his nature in you. And that nature hates evil and loves the things of God. And when there's actions or there are actions in my life that don't line up with scripture, then as a believer, I want to get rid of those actions. The problem is sometimes we approach that the wrong way and those situations get worse because we think we can overcome these problems by what we do. We think we can overcome these problems by our great profession, our great prayer lives, or our activity to try to avoid those things. You can't watch enough TV to get rid of sin. Right. Mm. A lot of times, and listen, I want the, the Lord has, was showing me some things. A lot of times we try to stay busy to try to avoid circumstances, but that's not deliverance. Come on. Because you stay busy doesn't mean you're delivered from that thing. Because just as sure as your name is Florence Nash, you're going to face this problem again. And you'll find out really and truly if that thing is still there. You can watch TV all day. You can play games. You can get on social media. You can do whatever you want to do. And a lot of times entertainment, don't get deep, just be honest. Entertainment has a way of getting our mind off reality. Yeah. But at some point, TV's got to go off. 
At some point, the, the, the internet fails. At some point, it's just going to be you and Jacob was left alone. Yeah. At some point, you're going to be alone, and that reality has to set in that, hey, I've got a problem. There's an issue in my life that's eating away at me, and I know that God wants to heal this issue. God wants to deal with this issue. And so Paul is saying here, listen, you need, as a believer, to walk. Order your life in the spirit, the Holy Spirit. Not the human spirit, but the Holy Spirit. In other words, know who the Holy Spirit is. Know how the Holy Spirit works. The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Godhead. He's God. The Holy Spirit works, according to Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, exclusively, not in any other way other than within what Christ did at Calvary. The, Holy, the cross is what allowed the Holy Spirit to come into the world and take up residence in us. So if it was the cross that opened the door for him to come, it's the cross that allows him to work in our lives. So I need the Holy Spirit working, but I've got to do my part, which is faith in Christ and what that's my part. My part is to trust. My part is to believe. And God says when you believe, when you begin to trust in what I provided, the Holy Spirit will begin to work in your life and you as a believer can experience victory. Now, I want to stop there and say this, because there's some of us in here tonight, I'm going to be honest with you, what I sense, we're struggling to believe that, because we're not seeing victory in our lives. Victory, walking in victory, faith, think about this for a moment, the Bible says it's a fight. It's an agony. It's not something that's going to come easy. I want you to think about Paul for just a moment. Romans chapter 7. He said, for that which I do, I allow not. But what I would, that do I not. What is he saying? He said, what I want to do, I'm not doing. What I desire to see in my life, I'm not seeing. My heart's desire is to live holy and to live free from sin. And then he said, but what I hate, I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever felt that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Sense that? All the time. Mm -hmm. Then in chapter 7 and verse 24, he said, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? There is no fight that you will face as a Christian. And there is no heartache that you will face. You can talk about what other people have done to you all you want. Mm -hmm. But there is no heartache like wanting to do good and not finding the capability of doing it. Now you can get deep right now and say, well, that's not me. That's never been me. But you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah, right. I didn't say you got to talk to me about it. That's you right. got to be honest with yourself. Right. When everything, <coughs> think about Peter for a moment. Peter, I'm never going to, I wouldn't deny you. I wouldn't fail you. I, I would go uh, to the grave. I'll die. I'll follow you everywhere you go, Jesus. I will never deny you. I will never leave you. That's what Peter said. Peter kept saying that to Jesus. And a few hours later, Peter was put to the test. And everything Peter said he wouldn't do, he did. How in the world can I make a declaration and say, I will never yeah. do this again and mean it? Yeah. And then find myself right down that pathway again. It's because of this, this flesh. This person that I am is incapable of doing what God requires. That's what you're going to have to understand. But I want you to hear me tonight. You're on the road to victory when you start embracing the cross. You may not see it instantly. That's why you got to keep believing. I, you got to hear me tonight. I want to encourage you. We've got to keep believing. God said, Abraham, you're going to have a child. 20 
five years passed before he had that child. The promise was given. Now, I want to give you scripture on this because I, I, I'm here, so we're going to stay here for just a moment. But after 10 years, Abraham got tired of waiting. And he said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and marry Hagar. And God hadn't given me a son yet. We're going to make our own son. Because he got tired of waiting on possessing the promise. So many times believers quit in the wilderness. So many times we quit when we see trouble. So many times we quit and throw our hands up when we see problems and we'll go to the world and literally live in the world. Mama. I want you to think about this for just a moment. You're struggling as a Christian. Mm. You're hurting. But I'll tell you the truth, and this sounds awful, but I'll tell it just like I feel it in my heart tonight. I would rather be hungry and thirsty and, 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 and hot yeah. in a wilderness yeah. knowing that I still have the pillar of fire and the cloud of God leading me and guiding me while I'm in my filth and mess than to die in the luxury of Egypt. Come on, somebody. I would rather struggle in him that live in the world and die and go to hell trying to chase after something that's not of God. No, it's not God's will that we struggle, but I'm telling you, God can't help you if you quit. You have left the ark of safety. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide there. If you dwell there, you'll abide there. And there are promises given if you're in Christ. Mm. But once you step away and stop believing, you have nothing left. You forfeited everything that God had for you because you quit in the face of a struggle. Now, what I'm preaching to you right now is not a weak gospel. I'm telling you about the reality of human beings. Yeah. The gospel is airtight. The gospel is perfect. Nobody can preach it perfectly, but the gospel itself is perfect. Mm -hmm. And if we embrace it, we'll experience change. And you got to ask yourself this. Am I in the same place I was last year this time, two years ago? You've experienced growth. The enemies are being driven out little by little. You see some more Canaanites and Perizzites. Remember, they conquered so many enemies. Joshua and all of the children of Israel conquered the enemies. And then God says, Joshua, there's still a long way to go. You've driven out a lot of the enemies. A lot of the things that were there are gone. But there's still some things there. And you know, the whole time, God is telling you, Embrace my way. You see, chapter 5, what, what manifests through us, what manifests through our flesh. And then you see, chapter 5, verse 22, what manifests or what the Holy Spirit produces. There's a comparison here, the flesh and the spirit. Yeah. Fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. I want you to. Now think about it. He said the, the law is fulfilled in one word, love. Then he goes to the fruit of the spirit and goes right back to that, love. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that because we, we really dealt with it last week, but that's the foundation of it all right there, love. That's who God is, love. Love is a sacrificial type love. You say you love me. How much do you love me? How much do I love you? How much am I willing to love you? And then not only love, joy, which is inward, which comes from the Holy Spirit, a joy in the face of trouble, peace, sanctifying peace, knowing that while I'm in the storm, God is with me. Yeah. That's what you call peace. Yeah. You think about Jesus. And the disciples, Jesus had given the ship. Jesus was in the back of the ship, asleep. The storm was beating against the ship. The waves are beating. They're panicking. And they're running and saying, Jesus, wake up, wake up. Do you not care that we're about to die? Do you realize we're about to die? Jesus gets up and said, oh, ye of little faith. <laughs> Basically, he was telling them, I'm in the ship. You're in me. 
you're in the ship with me. You're going to make it. I know the storm is all around you, but you are going to make it. Somebody needs to get that tonight. Mm -hmm. Everything is falling apart around you. Remember, a thousand will fall by your side and 10,000 by your right side. But the Bible says it shall not Come nigh thee, for the Lord shall give come his on. angels charge concerning you. I mean, come on, somebody. You are in Christ Jesus. I don't understand this faithless, unhappy Christian experience. Oh, you know, you go to church and there's no excitement. There's no joy. There's no, You should have joy. This is the time you ought to be loud. This is the time you ought to act a fool. This is the time where you ought to throw your hands up because the devil has chased you all week long. Let me tell you something. He's in hot pursuit to kill you. And the very thing that we embrace is destructive if it's not Christ. Jesus. It broke my heart to see this young rapper murdered the other day. 20 years old. 20 years old. But the lyrics of his songs were that of violence, destruction, satanic worship, saying that he embraced death and wanted to go to hell. And he ends up dead. And the hip hop community mm. is mourning and hurting. And we should mourn over any human being right, that dies. Right, right. Saved or unsaved, doesn't matter. But every time he performed, people ran and jumped and screamed. And with excitement, they proclaimed him. Here's what blows my mind. You name the name Jesus, and there is a fear to shout. My God. Mm -hmm. There is a fear mm -hmm. to lose my identity. Why is there such a fear to go forth and praise, but such a boldness to go forth in satanic worship? Come on. I know that's not going to be popular, Come I know on. but I, I've got to say, why is there such a fear? Why is there such a bashfulness to, to go forth and praise? Mm -hmm. To live, I mean, you think about that. Just look at what I'm doing right now. Everyone in this room tonight, you got a blood ball right to do this. That's it. That's it. You literally don't have to have permission. You don't have to buy a ticket. You don't have to buy an album. All you got to do is say yes to him. And there is an energy that comes from the Holy Ghost. Anybody here say tonight? That I mean, in when you're hurting, I know what I'm talking about. When you're down, when you're literally struggling and holding on with the fabric of your faith and about to give up hope, there's some peace that comes from the Lord. There's a joy that fills your heart. A peace that says, you know what? Everything's going to be alright in the face of failure. There's a shout that comes out of your spirit. I don't see the end from now. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I know that my Redeemer lives. I've got a witness in my heart that I may be down, but I'm going to rejoice and give him praise. Hallelujah. That shouldn't be hard to do. Thank you, Jesus. But I refuse to force anybody to praise God. Amen. Praise is an individual faith. Come on, somebody. Praise is an individual faith. Because you know what? I saw a video the other day. This young man, and it was a little funny, but it was sad. He comes out on stage and he said, everybody praise God. And, and, and the people are just sitting there looking at him. He got mad. And start screaming at the congregation. Seriously. I said everybody starts fussing and everybody stands up. That wasn't a real praise. Right. Let me tell you what real praise is. See, you know, it's just one thing to praise in here. I'm not Brittany standing up there Sunday and saying, y'all give God praise and we wave our hands. But let me tell you what the real praise hits you. The real praise hits you on Highway 45. Yeah. The real yeah. praise hits you in your kitchen yeah. or while you're in your car yeah. and nobody's yeah. around yeah. and you're hurting.
cunning and the devil told you, I'm going to kill you and suffocate your life. I'm going to destroy you. And all of a sudden, your hands go up. That's the real praise. I don't need music. I don't need Tory. I just need relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what praise will do. There's a response to the Holy Spirit. Love, joy. Do you have joy? I mean, when you come on now, you said the spirit is working. There should be joy. Yes. Peace. Then he said this. Long suffering. Gentleness, goodness, faith. All of these have to do with how I treat you. You know what long suffering is? It's the ability to forbear. Yeah and endure under pressure, yeah. under ridicule, mm. under hurt. Sure. Let me give you a scriptural oh, example. Man. Joseph was long-suffering. Mm -hmm. Man, 13 Ooh, years, yeah. knowing they were lying on him, and he never accused his brothers. That's long-suffering. Mm -hmm. Do you have that? <laughs> Need working on. I mean, I want you to hear me. They were lying on Joseph. They were lying on him. They they were they were contemplating, or not the, that, that's not the right word. They were plotting his death. And he never accused him. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, came back and found Peter and John. Could you not pray with me for one hour? Just one hour. He was about to be crucified. Think about this for a moment. The, the people he prayed for, he protected them. He gave everything he had. And Judas walks into the garden with this mob and tells them, he said, the man who I kiss, arrest him. 30 pieces of silver, mm -hmm. he betrayed the Lord for the price of a slave. Yeah. I, I want you to hear me tonight. I'm, I'm going to close with this. Pay, just, you can stay with me. Because this is the sacrifice that we, you, you hear us talk about the cross and Christ crucified. This is what we're talking about. They walk in there and, and, and they didn't even give him a proper trial. The actual law, they broke the law in order to carry out their selfish vendetta yeah. against Jesus. Immediately, they started punching him, beating him in the face, right there in the garden. And he's standing there, knowing full well that it was time. Because he told his disciples before Judas came, yeah. he said, time is now. Yeah. Those who are coming to betray me here. Peter pulls out his sword and cuts off one of the guard's ear. Jesus reaches down, picks up the ear, listen to me, and heals the man. He healed an enemy. He healed the man that was trying to kill him. I want you to let this sink in tonight. I don't, I don't want you thinking about nobody else, looking at nobody else. I want you to think about this for just a moment. He picks up an ear and heals a man that wanted him dead. And said, Peter, put up your sword. Because it was time to fulfill scripture. Isaiah said he bore our transgression chastisement of our peace was upon him. Yeah. Your soul and my soul lie in the balance. <laughs> and here Jesus Christ is in the garden of Gethsemane and they take him and they arrest him. And when they arrest him, they took a whip made up of broken bones. prophet said, I gave my back to the sinners. <clears throat> and they begin to whip him. And every time they hit him with that whip, I want you to think about this. You ever cut yourself? Yeah. <clears throat> think about 
Think about how bad a little paper cut hurts. Yeah. Think about how bad a little sting or something hurts. Every time they hit him and they drew that whip back, it would literally rip flesh from his back. Every time they hit him, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. He knew he had to carry this out for you and I to be saved. Thinking about what I'm talking about right now, I'm going to be very transparent and honest. It convicts me. Me. I'm preaching this, but I, I feel conviction because I'm saying, Lord, I haven't. Mm. I haven't, I'm not that man. I haven't sold out like I know I should. Yeah. Have I given you all of me? Have I really surrendered every area of my life to you? Mm. Have I really said, Lord, yes to you in every aspect of my life? Looking at what you did and how you gave up your physical body so that I could literally walk through the door of heaven. Mm. A sinner, vowed as they kept beating him and they kept beating him and they took a, a crown and I'm going to close and, they, it, and the crown wouldn't fit on his head saints it was the thorns were about four to six if you imagine thorns this long yeah. they made it up and they, they had to push it and press it down literally ripping more and more flesh till his head began to swell and Isaiah 52, 14 says his visage was marred more than any other man. Mary, his mother, was standing there watching, and she couldn't recognize her son. And they ripped his clothes off of him, and he, he hung there naked in front of the world to see. They spit on him, and they took a, a staff as though the thorns weren't enough, and they start hitting him across the head where the thorns were, driving them deeper into his skull. And all of a sudden, he's thirsty. He's hanging there and they're mocking him. They're walking by, shaking their heads, saying he saved others, but he couldn't save himself. Mm -hmm. And he prays. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I can't, I, I'll be honest, I can't fathom that kind of power, that kind of patience, that kind of love. I mean, the love that drove him to that place of knowing that the, the lives of millions of people literally are riding on what I do here in this, on this mountain today. And Jesus is hanging there, and while they're mocking him, he's praying for them. While they're laughing at him, he's praying for them. While they're talking about him, he's praying for them. And he looks up and says, Father, into thy hand, I commend my spirit. St. John 19 and 30 gives us three words that every person in this room yeah. should know and feel. He said, it is finished. The first words recorded in the Bible that Jesus ever spoke was to his parents. And those words were, wist ye not, I come to do my father's business. Yes. Hmm. And the last three words that he spoke in his earthly ministry were, it is finished. My God. He said, I came to do the work and I finished the work. And because he finished the work, I can have this filthy human being. And if you ain't got to that point yet where you realize you're filthy, mm -hmm. you're not fit to be saved. That's it. Oh, That's right. That's right. Salvation humbles the pride of a man. Because it makes us come under conviction and realize I am nothing without Jesus Christ. And because he said those words, remember John 16, he said it is expedient that I go away because I have to send you the comforter. Because he said it is finished, he has sent back the comforter. And the Holy Spirit didn't just come to the world. Remember Eliezer. The Eliezer
Eliezer, when he, came, when he went to find Isaac's wife, Rebekah, Eliezer was a type of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, he was sent by the Father. Oh, my God. Eliezer was sent by Abraham. He didn't just come empty-handed. He came with gifts. The Holy Spirit didn't just come empty-handed. He came with fruit. He came with gifts. He came to give you something. And because Jesus hung there, it's not bad news. Hmm. People look at the crucifixion and say, oh, poor Jesus. No. My Remember, before he died, he told them something. I think they forgot it. Somebody said, how do you know they forgot it? Because when he died, they went to his burial expecting him to be in the tomb. Mm -hmm. They forgot what he said. He said, no man... Right. Taking my life, I lay my life yeah. down for my yeah. sheep. And I, if I've got the power to lay it down, yeah. I want you all to hear me. Yeah. I mean, in the face of all of his detractors, he said, I've got the power to pick it up again. He said, in three days, you'll kill me because I'll allow you to kill me. But in three days, I'm going to take up my life again. I don't need a man to come to the tomb. My power will roll the stone away. My God, they couldn't, the Bible says, death had no more dominion over him. Yeah. He took the sting of death, the pain of death, so you and I could go free. Who wouldn't serve yeah, a yeah, God yeah. like Thank this? You, Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're in the best thing going. Yeah. I don't care what the world tells you. You are in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Everything may not be all right. You may not be experiencing the victory like you want, but you are in the family. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah. it. Right on. They look at the prodigal kind of funny, the elder brother, but you got to remember the prodigal was still in the family. Yeah. Oh, y'all didn't get that. That went over your head. You may have gone into a far country, but you're still in the family. They forgot that when they cut Samson hair, hair has an ability to grow back again. And they didn't realize when they were making fun of Samson and gouged out his eyes that the Bible says, but the hair began to grow back on his head. They didn't realize that God is not in the business of throwing people away, but God is in the business of restoration. You might have fallen down flat on your face, but I've got a word for you tonight. Get up, child of God. Get out of that pit. Get out of that stupor and let God change you. He'll give you more, but you can't quit while you're here. He'll develop fruit in your life. You'll be walking around full of joy. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Full of long suffering. Yes, People are hurting you and you're just sitting there loving hey. them. Yeah. Come on, sir. Full of meekness, yeah. full of temperance, full of fruit. Because of one reason, and that's who Christ is and what he did at Calvary. It's not of man, it's not the fruit of man, but it's the fruit of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, we love you. Yes, we praise you today. Lord, we just ask you to help us. Let's just begin to pray. Ask the Lord, I mean individually, just come on, just ask the Lord to help us. Lord, help us. Help me, help us. 